Hello there everyone, Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com and in this video I'd like to share with you a time lapse that was taken from a series of lessons which is part of a brand new course that is in development for members at the virtualinstructor.com. Now this course is entitled Three Little Birds with Colored Pencils and in it we take a look at drawing three different small birds with three different brands of colored pencils on three different surfaces. Now this time lapse is taken from our second series of lessons where we draw a blue jay with polychromos oil based colored pencils made by Faber-Castell on pastel matte paper. Now this course series is broken down just like our other courses where we take the entire process and break it down into bite size, easy to understand chunks in video content, but we also include step-by-step -step illustrated eBooks so you don't miss any step of the process. Now to learn more about our membership program, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below, or you can click on the link in the card in the, in the upper right-hand corner of this video. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and have have a look at the time lapse. For this drawing, I decided to start with a transfer process, which basically means I applied pastel material to the back of the photo reference. Then after taping the photo reference in place over the top of the pastel matte paper, I could use a sharp tool, in this case a mechanical pencil loaded with 2H graphite, to trace over the contour lines. This created a contour line drawing of our final surface, and of course this saves time and ensures accuracy. Then after taping off the picture plane, we could begin with pan pastel applications. Now pan pastels are basically the pastel material in small little pans like we normally associate with watercolor. We use special applicators of course to apply the pan pastel material to the surface. You can see here that the pan pastels create a painterly look, allowing us to create smooth transitions between different colors and values relatively easily. Plus, they cover a large surface area in a short period of time, which made them an excellent choice for this particular image. Now you'll also notice that I'm going back and adjusting the values, adding light and dark values to ensure a bit of variety in the drawing. Now we started with the background since our colored pencil applications are going to be applied over the top, which makes perfect sense. Once our pan pastel material is in place, we can begin with the colored pencil applications. Now in this case, I started with the eye and began working outward from the eye. Now you'll notice I'm using quite a bit of black here to initially get down some of those darker values, but black on its own is rather flat and can make a drawing appear unnatural. So over the top, I applied a bit of dark indigo to make the black appear a little bit more natural. Then, of course, we have lots of blue sections on the head of this blue jay. So we created these blue sections with a variety of different blues, both dark valued blues and light valued blues. And we also could make the values a little bit darker with dark indigo and, of course, a bit of black. The blues primarily stayed around the range of ultramarine. We used a bit of sky blue and some endanthrin blue as well. Now for the white sections, you can see I've added a little bit of warmth here and there to make the white sections appear more natural. White, just like black, can appear flat and unnatural if you're not careful. So a bit of color, a bit of tonality helps a bit making those white sections appear more natural as well. Now with oil-based colored pencils like we're using here, layering is exceptionally important. It's important with really any colored pencil drawing, but with oil-based colored pencils, it's even more so. This is just simply because of the nature of oil-based colored pencils. They are designed for layering. So when you're creating a colored pencil drawing with oil-based colored pencils, it's important to note that you're going to need to make multiple layered applications in order to build up the complexity in the color and also the range of value that's necessary to create a representational drawing. You'll also notice that directional stroking is exceptionally important here. The directional strokes create the illusion of the texture of the feathers, but it also helps to create the illusion of form as well. You'll notice these directional strokes as a whole curve around the form of the body of the bird as we work downward. Now, of course, these directional strokes can be changed a little bit. As you can see here, we're creating a little bit of curve in some of the directional strokes to create the illusion of overlapping feathers. Of course, value helps with this as well, so you'll see I'm going back with some darker values and also also some lighter values to create the necessary value to create the illusion of texture in this section. Now as we continue to work downward on the body, we notice that the blues change quite a bit. The upper portion of the body is 
a blue that leans closer towards a purple on the color wheel. So we used mostly ultramarine to address most of the blues on the upper part of the body. On the lower portion of the body where we have the longer feathers, we actually switched over to allowing thalo blue to dominate, which is closer to green on the color wheel. Now, of course, our directional stroking here is still important. So we considered the direction, length, and orientation of each one of the feathers as we made our strokes in this section. Also, creating a range of value is important as well as each one of these individual feathers are, in essence, a form, which means that there should be highlights and shadows in each one of these sections. You can see as I went through this drawing process, I basically formulated a progression of colors, layering the phthalo blue first with a bit of endanthrene blue as well to make the values a little bit darker. And then over the top, a bit of white, a bit of black, a bit of dark indigo as well to create the patterns on each one of the feathers. Now, with any colored pencil drawing, it's important to note that this is a time-consuming process. Now, although this video is sped up, it's a time lapse, it shouldn't mislead you into thinking that this process was quick. This is a slow process, and as you can see, lots and lots of layers of colored pencils are applied to the surface. So it's important to take your time, work slowly and deliberately, and really layer those colored pencils to build up the necessary depth and create a more natural looking drawing. Most of the time, the colors that you use on their own are not enough. It's only when we mix them on the surface that we arrive at an appearance that is, of course, more natural and more realistic. So as you can see, the burnishing process is also different with oil-based colored pencils. Now, burnishing is basically the process of working the material into the tooth or texture of the paper. Now, this particular surface, pastel matte paper, has a very fine, coarse, texture associated with it, which will really eat up your colored pencils in a short period of time. But more importantly, it does create a, a texture when you apply the colored pencils. So burnishing is important when you're working on a textured surface. You do have to work that material into the tooth of the paper to create a smooth appearance like we want to see in most cases with a colored pencil drawing. Now with a wax-based colored pencil, you can use what's called a colorless blender to basically work the wax material into the tooth of the paper, but with oil-based pencils, we don't really have that luxury. So you'll notice that I'm doing a lot of the burnishing using lighter colored pencils, like the white and like the warm gray. We can always push the values darker, even after we've burnished a section with a lighter colored pencil, because the oil-based pencils cover over the top of previous applications a little bit easier than the wax-based colored pencils. So as we work our way to the right side, you'll see that the process remains relatively the same for each one of the feathers. We're using the same colors. The progression of the way that we're layering colors might change a little bit just to mix things up a little bit, but it's still the same colors that we're applying to the surface. You can see here in this particular section, I switched over to addressing the dark shapes first before going in with the phthalo blue and then the white, then the endanthrene blue, and of course the dark indigo to make the values even darker. Here you can really see the directional strokes and how they play a role in creating the illusion of texture even on this smoother feather. You'll also notice, as I just mentioned about the burnishing process, how our first applications are very, very textured. You can see this clearly here, but as we layer some of the lighter colors over the top, the applications are forced into the, or the material is forced into the tooth of the paper, creating a smoother appearance, which more closely aligns with what we see on these feathers. Now in this drawing, of course, I started at the top of the body with the head and then worked my way down. But in this particular section where we have these detailed feathers, I started on the left side of the picture plane and worked my way over to the right. This is simply because I'm right-handed and I wanted to prevent any smearing of the applications we already had in place by the palm of my hand. So if you're left-handed, you might consider starting on the right side of the body of the bird or whatever subject you're drawing and then working to the left side to prevent any smudging or smearing. You'll also occasionally see a glimpse of a paper towel here and there in this time lapse, and that's because I did have a paper towel underneath the palm of my hand to prevent any smearing of the pan pastel applications that we already had in place. 
Now we quickly went through that white section over there on the right side of the body, but you'll notice that there's a bit of black here and also a bit of warmth added with some raw umber. But all of those applications were burnished with the white to create a more natural looking shadow. And of course, a sharper pencil was used to pull out a few of those stray feathers to create a more natural appearance. Then our progression of colors continued down on the larger feathers underneath on the lower part of the body. The process was completely the same. Again, thinking about directional stroking here and also burnishing the applications with a bit of white, a touch of gray here and there, and just to create a more smoother appearance. Of course, the lower feather, the lower long feather on the right overlaps the one on the left, so we see a little bit of cast shadow in this location, and there is a slight curve of these feathers at the bottom portion, so the values get slightly darker since less light is hitting this particular section. Then it was on to the last remaining feathers, the last remaining visible feathers on either side of the central feather. And again, the process was the same. Same colors were used in this particular section, but a bit of shadow was added to create the illusion that this feather was actually underneath the larger feather. And of course, this was applied to both of the feathers on either side of this large dominant feather. Then after addressing the last remaining bits of blue on either side of the feathers, we added the large white sections at the bottom of these feathers as well to finish off the bird, basically. Then it was time to address the branch that the bird was sitting on. Now we went to the branch next instead of the talon because the talon, of course, overlaps the branch. We started here with a few browns and oranges and also some grays to mute the color and also to make it appear more natural. We also strengthened the highlight here with a bit of white. And then of course it was time to strengthen the shadow with a bit of walnut brown, which is a very, very dark brown. You can see here with the addition of the shadow and this darker value, we started to create a more convincing illusion that the branch was actually round, but also created the illusion of the texture of the branch as well. We also pulled in a bit of Payne's Gray to make the value a little bit darker, but still allowed some of those browns to show through. Then some additional burnishing with warm gray here helped to create a more convincing illusion of the texture of the branch. Then of course all that was left is the talon and to address the talon we started with a bit of dark indigo then paints gray of course some white for the highlights and a bit of warmth with raw umber was also added here to create a convincing illusion. Then it was time to pull the tape away and our colored pencil drawing of a blue jay completed with polychromos oil based colored pencils on pastel matte paper was complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were able to pick up a thing or two here and there. Remember, you can check out the first two videos of this lesson series for free, again, by clicking on the link in the description below. You can also check out our membership program where you get access to all of our great drawing and painting courses, as well as weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, lesson plans for teachers, and much, much more. Again, a link is in the description below. You can also check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free by clicking on the link in the description below or on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, what are you waiting for? We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subjects here. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. As always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success. Thanks again for watching.